Hey guys, Dave from Mosaic, back with another behind the scenes video. In this one, we're gonna take a look at how support works. So I want to give you guys a bit of a peek behind the scenes here at the way we manage incoming email support. Mosaic has this awesome built-in utility where it packages up your job and your data and it sends it through to us in a way that we can unpack it and then see what you're seeing and record a video to help you understand kind of like the, the context of how to get around whatever it is that you're challenging. Uh, so it's, it's difficult for that to sort of make sense unless you see it. So the idea of this video is really to give you a bit of a behind the scenes view of like what, what do we see when we receive that email? What do we do with it? And then how do we use that to give you something uh, useful? So let's look over to my screen. I'm going to show you what, uh, what we see on our side. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit tricky. We're going to record the screen. I'm going to record a Loom uh, support video. I'm going to record on my DJI as well. That way I can try and capture this uh, as authentically as possible. So bear with me, let's uh, let's get into it. So I've got my screen running here uh, and we've got an email open from a customer who has asked the question, hi Eric, when I optimize this job, handle holes are not shown in the parts. So it does also show us here like who the customer is and what version they're on. So it says they're running version 13.1.6, which was December 20, December 3rd, 2024 release. Uh, and we can see that the product type is Mosaic CNC. So we're also seeing like the cut, the shop name, the user ID, uh, the shop email, etc. So, you know, we're getting a well-rounded perspective of like who this customer is, what version they're on. Uh, so we can, cons I can see straight away when I'm reviewing this, okay, like they're a couple of versions behind, you know, like they're still on 13.1, the most current version, but there are a few builds behind. They're on 0 0.6, we're up to point eight now so you know there potentially could be something there it just highlights to me that that's something that i might need to be aware of um, but however what the main thing is here it does attach the error log and a few other files the main file here is the job data so it's the job data.dat file so i'm going to go ahead and click download there just to download that one what that's going to do is just drop that in my downloads folder now what i'm going to do from here is now go ahead and do something with that so I've got a little uh, PowerShell script that I wrote just to make this a little bit quicker and easier for me to kind of extract that and use that. So I've just got this one here called help desk, simply double click on that and that's gonna fire up my PowerShell script. Um, predominantly the reason for this is I wanna be able to flag if I'm gonna view this like open mosaic in manufacturing CNC or enterprise. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press two for CNC and press enter. That's gonna go ahead and put in my like codes and user ID and everything like that. Uh, to make sure that we're firing up the right version of Mosaic and we're also loading up this job data in the background. So what I have now is, is John's uh, version of Mosaic open and running and I can go open the job. It's also cleared out my job file here and, and we've got basically the CNC uh, version open. Let me just make this a little bit bigger so we can kind of see it clearer and we'll jump in and see what we've got here. So let's go to the products tab and take a look. Remembering the question was about um, getting the handle holes to appear when they go through to the CNC. So first of all, let's take a look um, at the settings. So what I'd probably do is first of all, just clarify like what the selection for the hardware is. So if we take a look here for our door pulls, uh, so it's just on job settings and so nothing's overridden at um, product level. It's the sort of first thing I'd want to check there. If we go to the face and have a look at the adjustments, you can see like there's nothing overridden here either. So we're just looking at what the, the actual hardware is at this particular case. So let's dive back to settings and take a look. And in the settings, we can see that there's a D handle 128 selected. So let's go into libraries and hardware and come down and take a look at what that particular hardware item is. So we'll go to pools and we've got the D handle 128 open. And as you can see, so we've got a, a whole diameter there of five mil uh, and we've got a hole separation of 128. Um, we've got a vertical handle selected there. So everything on the hardware itself looks fine. Let's take a look at the door. So we've got standard door and standard draw. So let's go into libraries and go to door and then we'll take a look at that particular option. So we'll go to slab here and let's go ahead and find the standard door. And okay, so now this is highlighting where the problem is. What we can see is that the bore for pulls is not enabled. So with that not enabled, that means that the boring is not getting assigned. Uh, it's like that by default out of the box because most people probably don't want to drill for handles. You know, it's common for customers to change their mind last second and then, you know, you've drilled a bunch of doors that you'll need to uh, remanufacture or recut. 
So at this point in time, I've identified the problem. I know uh, what the fix is and solution is to let John know. Uh, so at this point in time, my process would then be to record a Loom video to uh, let John know what the solution is. So I'm gonna go ahead and open Loom. Uh, I'm gonna get a sort of little pop-up here that asks me like which screen, do I want a full screen? Uh, do I want to just part, you know, part of the screen? So I can go here and just say like, you know, full screen or specific window. And then I can go ahead and decide which screen and then, you know, pick a particular window, um, you know, or I can go back and just, you know, put that on a custom size, which is typically what I would do there. And then just, you know, make it a little bit bigger than my sort of mosaic screen size here. And at this point now I'll click start recording and I'll record the video for John. Gives me a little countdown here and now I can go through the video. So, hey John, thanks for reaching out with your question regarding the handles. What I can see here is that you've got a D handle 128 selected. The handle looks fine. I've checked that out. Uh, everything looks good there. Uh, on the door style, however, the door does need to be enabled for bore for pulls option to be ticked on. So we're going to go into libraries and then come down to doors. And then what we're going to do is jump in to the slab category and we're going to go down and select that particular door. So you've got a bunch of different doors in here. We're going to start with standard door and you'll see an option in the right hand menu under the options area called bore for pulls. So what you want to do is go ahead and enable that option and that is going to allow or tell Mosaic that you would like to drill the holes for the handles or pulls as they're also known. So then we're going to drop this menu down and also go to standard door or draw, sorry. And then we're going to go ahead and press bore for pulls as well. Um, looking at that then, you know, any of the other doors that you might want Mosaic to drill for, you could go, you know, into your, your shaker doors, for example, or any of the other doors in your library and then do the same thing, just tick them on. And then that will be instructing Mosaic that you would like to drill those holes. So if we come back to products here and we review this now, we can see straight away that we can actually see our handle holes appearing. Uh, so you can see them there appearing on the door. And then if we just have a quick review here and we'll go to cut list and let's see, we've got your 16 mil um, parts there and we'll go ahead and press optimize and we'll just take them through to the optimizer and just confirm for sure that they're definitely coming through. I'm going to click override with new parts because I'm really um, wanting to make sure that I'm taking the latest part and I'm not seeing the old outdated copy in the optimizer. That's definitely one key thing to remember. And so when we take a look at our components here and we go to parts and edit part operations, we can see here, I'll just flip the door over. We can see we've got our hinge holes and we've also got our handle holes. Uh, so that would be the process that you would need to go through just to enable that. Um, hopefully that makes sense. If there's any other questions, please reach out, let us know. Um, if I've missed anything or there's something you just need clarified, um, yeah, please drop us a line. We're here to help. Thank you. Okay, so I've now clicked to save the Loom recording and the Loom recording has um, opened. Let me bring this across and kind of see you, like show you what we see on our side. So here's the Loom recording page open. Uh, it gives us like an automatic um, name there. You know, obviously <laughs> little things like the spelling of mosaic. Uh, I wish that we could kind of automate that a little better or tell Loom that we, you know, instead of doing this every single time. Um, but then it gives us a little summary. It auto creates some chapters as well. So it just improves the viewing experience for John. He can choose to watch this in like, you know, slow it down. If I've spoken too fast, he can choose to speed it up. If I've spoken too slow or he just really wants to get to the answer. Uh, and so at this point, what I would do is basically click here to share and I would choose to embed this. I would go ahead and copy that thumbnail GIF. And at this point in time, I can go back to the original uh, email from John and I can reply to that. And generally we will have like a template in place here where I can go ahead and, you know, choose to say like my video response and I'll choose my video reply template and I'll go ahead and insert in the link. So they are very quickly established a nice reply to John where I've said, you know, hi John, thanks for your email. Please watch the following video response I created for you and here's the video response. And there it is. That's the process from start to finish. That's exactly what we go through um, and how we manage to support and deliver what we believe is the industry leading experience when it comes to service and support for software. 
see for yourself. Uh, let us know what you think. Drop a comment below. Reach out. Have you any questions? Um, thanks for watching and hope that's been useful. Cheers.